All right, so thank you so much everybody for being here. Just a quick little introduction. My name's Laura and I am the Client Engagement Manager here at EPACT. We're really excited to bring you through our group administrator training today. So um, to start, we will go through um, how to accept your EPACT administrator invites. And then from there, I'll bring you over to the dashboard to give you a general overview of the dashboard as well show you some new functionality we have for the different ways you can view your members and um, run you through reports and messaging as well. So just to get started, um, to let you all know, we will have a question and answer period at the end. Um, so if you guys could just hold on tight and we'll make sure that we address any questions that you have towards the end of the presentation here. So to start, I just wanted to do a quick overview of EPACT. So for those of you who don't know, EPACT is an online emergency network. Um, that helps our parks and recreation departments, as well as YMCAs collect and manage campers' emergency and medical information. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the paper form that you typically use to collect this information. EPACT is replacing that for you. So first of all, it removes that process of having to collect those hard copy forms, but more importantly, it also ensures that you aren't having to carry around binders or Ziploc bags filled with paper emergency forms to really increase the um, privacy and security of that information. So instead, we replace that with our mobile app where you can access this information anytime, anywhere that you need to. For your parents, EPACT is really a single emergency record that they use. So typically they'll share it with your programs that um, you run, but they can also use it to share with things like their daycares, their school, their sports associations, or any other organizations that they work with. So from here, we're going to jump right into our demo organization here. So for Camp Lonsdale, so I'm going to exit out of this and I am going to show you how to log in. So for those of you who are new to EPACT, you will receive an EPACT invite to your email from your organization. That's going to ask you to be an administrator on EPACT. You're going to click on the orange button in your email. And once you do that, it's going to ask you to create your EPACT account. Anytime you'd like to log into EPACT again, you're going to click, or sorry, open up your web browser and go to epactnetwork.com. From there, you're going to see that you do have this login button in the top right corner. You're gonna click on that there to log in. So let me do this quickly. So for any returning users, what you can do is again, just log in directly to your EPACT account. And you're going to see that's going to bring you right to the invites that you have for the organization that you oversee. So you can see here Georgia Smith. She's been invited to oversee summer camps week one through five. I'm just going to click accept for all of these so that I'm able to accept them. Fantastic. So once this is done, you're gonna see I don't have any other requests. This is actually going to bring me straight to my organization. So for those of you who are returning for EPACT from last year, this does look a little bit different. Now to toggle between your two types of accounts, you're going to use these two headers here. So my EPACT, the one on the left-hand side, if you wanted to access your personal account, that's where you would do so. On the other hand, if you wanted to um, access the organization that you administer to see the information for your participants, you're going to click on my organizations. So when I do that here, you're going to see that it brings me to the organizations I oversee. In this case, I want to choose Camp Lonsdale. So once I get in here, this is also going to look a little bit different for those of you who are new to EPACT, or sorry, returning to EPACT. So you can see here, I have a few different tabs that are new. The first is the all member record. So this is really for um, an overview of all of your members where you can see them all at once. So in this case, I oversee multiple groups or multiple programs. I can see all of my participants across all of my programs from this one view. On the next tab here, if I go to groups, I can see the individual groups that I oversee. So for example, if I wanted to look at summer camp week one, I'm gonna open up that group here. And from there, I can view the 35 members that I have in that group. And then if I go to the group administrators tab, I can also see the other administrators who are assigned to see those members. So anytime you wanna exit out of this view of, of an individual group, you're just going to click on Camp Lonsdale again. So the other two tabs to show you here, the roll call, 
Many of you won't have this enabled, but this is our two-way messaging. Um, so if, for example, you needed to send a notification and have parents confirm that they received it, um, what you could do is send them a roll call message, and from there, you'd be able to track all of the responses from a central dashboard. Again, the administrators tab, that shows you where um, all the other administrators are sitting, so you can also see who else has access to the same groups as you. So as I scroll down here, a few other things to show you here. You can see now that we have our all member records, we can see again, all of the members across all of the groups that I oversee. So on the left hand side, you're gonna see the name of the participant, but more importantly, we do have this red flag next to many of our members. That means that those parents have indicated an important medical condition for the participant. So it's really easy for you guys to identify. We also have things like member ID, email, and session, which are pretty self-explanatory. And then we also do have the status here. So as I scroll down, there are a few different statuses I want to show you. The first is to be invited. So that means that that member has just been added, and that, but they haven't been sent their invite yet. The next status after that is invited. So that means that that member has been invited, but they haven't done anything with their invite yet. After that, we have outstanding, this orange one here. That means that that parent has accepted the invite but hasn't quite done anything with it. This is typically something like they didn't have a doctor's phone number on them, so they've saved their record and will return to complete it later on. After that, we have the screen submitted, and that's what we want to see. That means that that record has been shared with us, and we can view it at any time. And then after that, we have downloaded if for any reason you need to download a record, say to print a paper form or just to keep a secure archive um, of the records, you can do that and the status will change to download it. The reason we do this is if for any reason Michelle's information changes, her parents can log in and update that and her status will change back to submitted so your administrators know that they need to go in and download a new copy of the updated information. Finally, there's two more. The um, second to last one is using paper forms. We don't expect this to happen very often, but there might be a parent who's just hesitant to put their information online. You can actually set that member's status to using paper forms, and we do this for two reasons. The first is that you won't that parent won't receive any further reminder messages, but also um, it is just a signal to your staff that there is a hard copy form for that member, so if you do need information for them at any time, they do need to be referring to, again, that hard copy form. Lastly, for Ruth Fisher here, you can see we have her in reconfirmation required. So this is for many of you who are returning from last year's programs. Um, what's happened here is Ruth has attended a previous program with us and is now enrolled for our upcoming summer camp programs. We have sent her a reconfirm request because we want her parents to go through and ensure her information is still up to date. If there are any changes, they can do so. And from there, they're going to share that information again. She'll change to submitted, but in the meantime, you still do have access to the information that was submitted for Ruth in the past. So as I scroll up here, just a few other things to show you. Date submitted, simply just a date stamp for the last time the information was shared with you. We also have date download, downloaded. So for anybody that is downloading information, that is where you can see the date for when that was done. So I did want to show you a few things under the actions column here. The first is this little pencil icon. So two things to point out here. The first is this status, and this is going to be your best friend. So you can see here, I can see that the email to archer9 at bsafebc.com was delivered. However, it will also tell you if it was opened. So if you have a parent saying to you, oh, I didn't receive that email invite for EPAT, you can go in here and you can check the status. Um, it might even be opened. So we hear a lot of the time that parents open the email at 5 p.m. the night before. That way you can actually say, no, I saw that you opened it and hold them accountable to it. So just a little trick that you guys can have up your sleeves there. The other thing is if I needed to add an email or delete an email, this is where I'm going to do it. I'm just going to potentially add a new email here. And then from there, I'm going to save it and send a new invite for those members. Finally, as I go down, you have a quick view of the other groups that a um, participant is registered for. So in this case, I know that this member is assigned to groups, um, sorry, weeks one, two, three, four, and five for camp, as well as a few other programs. So it just gives you um, a good idea of what is coming up for that child that you will be um, supervising over your programs there.
So from there, the other things to show you under this actions column, the first is this little eye icon. That's how you view the information for your member. Let me just open this up here. So you can see um, I do have the picture for Bobby as well as some basic information. As I scroll down, you see here any important medical information is flagged at the top. So I'm just going to click on that. And then as I scroll down, you're going to see that I have all of the details on those food allergies, for example, and all of the other information that has been asked for. In this case, this form is quite extensive. Many of you will not have a form that is this long, but you get an idea of how the information is laid out. So let me scroll down here. As I get to the bottom, you're going to see that I have the um, contact information for insurance and medical providers, but also the legal guardians, emergency contacts, and pickup list contacts. In this case, there is a person flight who cannot pick up as well. Finally, as I scroll to the bottom, you're going to see I have my waivers and consents. So in this case, there are two consent questions, but then also a waiver that the um, family has had to um, provide an e-signature and initial for. So let me back out of here. The other thing to show you under actions, the first one is this comment section. So these do stay internal to you, so your administrators can use this for any type of communications that you like with one another. Um, we often hear that if a participant is attending multiple programs or multiple locations, it's a great way for staff to share insight into that participant. So for example, if um, one participant is having behavioral issues, but one staff member finds something that works really well for them, they can go in here and note this in the comments for Robert, for example, and then um, future camp staff who are taking care of him at a different location or in a different week, for example, they can also see the comments left by that staff member to help provide the best care to Robert. Let me return to the member records here. The other one to show you is the file section. So it's this last little item under the actions. It's this little file icon. In this case for Brandon, I can see that he has four records uploaded. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see that there's two ways that these files are uploaded. On the left hand side, you can see the ones that were uploaded by Camp Lonsdale or staff members of Camp Lonsdale who were assigned as administrators in EPACT. So in this case, it looks like Brandon's parents have provided a hard copy allergy plan for him. Staff have actually gone and taken a scan or taken a photo of this and uploaded it to Brandon's records so it is in one place for everything. The parent has also uploaded something by themselves on the right hand side, as you can see here, added by member. In this case, it's medication instruction. So again, the parent has just shared that with you so they have additional information. So I'm gonna to return to member records here. The next thing to show you is our new advanced search and filter. So when you want to open that, you're just going to click on advanced search and filter right under the search bar. And this is going to look a little bit different than it has in the past. So if I wanted to look for people in a particular status, so for example, if I wanted to review everybody who was submitted and downloaded, for example, I'm going to select those and then I'm going to click search. Another option you have is looking for different groups. So the great thing about this is we now have this open field where you can type in any type of group name and then it's going to pull up the relevant results. So for example, I want to see everybody who's just in weeks one, two, and three. I'm going to select those here and then I can do a search. Always make sure that in between your searches you are hitting clear just to make sure you're taking out that history of what you've searched for in the past. So again, I'm going to open up this advanced search and filter and one report I want to show you is food allergies. So again, medical and dietary, you can scroll through and see the different types of medical and dietary conditions that you've asked for and that I can search for. In this case, again, I want to look for food allergies. So let me do this here. You can see I have food allergies selected. I'm going to click search. And from there, that's going to grab me 18 members. I'm going to select them by clicking select page. And then I'm going to click on more actions on the right hand side and export list at the very bottom here. So this is going to actually allow me to mix and match all of the data I asked for in my EPACT form. So in this case, I don't really care about things like email, status, session, and leader. But as I scroll down, I do want the name, uh, email, and primary phone number of the legal guardians in case I have any follow-up questions on the allergies. From there, I'm going to scroll to the bottom. You can see food allergies is already selected for me. Again, you can mix and match any pieces of data you need, but at this point, I'm happy with what I have. 
I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click export. So this will let me know that it's going to send me an email when my export is done. But in this case, it's a pretty small one. I know it's already finished, so I'm going to go grab that. So I'm going to click return to dashboard. From there, the area where you'll access the exports is the account activity log under updates and reports on the right hand side. So I'm going to click view here. This is really a history of everything that has happened in this account. So as you can see here, we've been pretty active exporting members. It will also th show things like if you're messaging more than 50 people, changing groups, anything like that, it will display in this background updates log. But for now, I'm really just interested in viewing my exports. So you can see this top one is the one I've just completed. Under actions, I'm going to click view to open that up. So that just gives me a quick um, detail on what is happening in the support. So for example, you can see it had 18 members in it because 18 members had indicated food allergies. From there, I'm going to click download file and that's going to download on my computer like any other file would. And from there, I'm going to open up the Excel document. So once this opens, you're going to see on the left hand side, I have the name of the member. And then as I scroll over, I have the details on the legal guardians as we discussed, but also all the information on the food allergies. So as I scroll over here, you can see that it gives me details of what the food allergy is, what happens if exposed to the allergen, the severity of the reaction, and then all the other details that the parents have provided for you. So again, it just kind of gives you a bird's eye view of everything that's happening for food allergies. What you could also do is run the support for, uh, for a specific program, for example, or even combine multiple types of uh, sorry, medical conditions in one report. So the other one I know that is very common for you guys is pick up list report. So let me do that here as well. So again, if you want to do it for particular members, you're ju just going to find them in the advanced search and filter. In this case, I'm going to run it for everybody. So for you guys to know the difference, we do have select page and select all. Select page is going to grab the 50 members on the first page or less. Whereas if you have more than that and you want to select everybody, you're going to click select all. So in this case here, I'm going to click select all. You can see that I have 61 members in this association, so it's grabbing all 61 members for me. So again, I'm going to click more actions and export list. And from there, I'm going to mix and match the data that I want. So I would like to have, again, the legal guardian's email and phone number, same for the emergency contacts, and then same for my pickup list contacts, for example. From there, I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this page, and then I'm going to click export. That's going to land in the exact same spot for me. I'm going to click return to dashboard and then go to my account activity log and click view for the export. Just click that green download file button and open up that Excel export for yourself. So once this is open here, you're going to see that I have all of my legal guardians as well as my emergency contacts and my pickup list contacts added. So on the left hand side, I have the actual member and then as I scroll over, I have all of the details for, again, those emergency contacts and the pickup list contacts as well. So again, just allowing you to put that all in one report. So let me go back to my dashboard here. The other things to show you under advanced search and filter, you do have a few other options. So for example, a lot of you will have consent questions. A very common one that we see is whether you can or cannot apply sunscreen to a child. If you wanted to search for those results, typically you'd want to look for um, children you are not allowed to apply sunscreen to. You're going to select no sunscreen application and you're going to click search. And that's going to grab me the 11 members. Again, you can export a list of that how you would like to. The other options you have here, if you wanted to see everybody that had an allergy plan, for example, you would click yes allergy plan and then do a search based on that. The other thing is we do have these new date filters, which are brand new and will really help you this summer. So if, for example, I wanted to see the members across all of my groups that start next week, for group start date from, I'm going to choose June 18th, and I'm going to do the same thing for the group start date too. Once I do that, that's only going to show me the members that are enrolled in a program that starts next week, as long as I have the start and end date assigned to the groups. 
Same thing for if, say, once a week you're going in and you're seeing who has recently submitted their information. You can also set a date stamp for that. So if, for example, I wanted to see who submitted their information in the last week, I'm going to click the from date as June 7th and the date 2 as June 14th. And from there, I'm just going to click search and it will grab me the relevant search results. As you can see, we also have options for date downloaded, um, as well as options for anybody who has comments, applied conditions, and if you have our text messaging module, whether or not they are verified for text messages. So again, you just always want to make sure you clear out of this. Okay, messaging. We do have a few different ways that you can send messages. If you wanted to send invites or individual reminders, for example, you can do that at any time. You're just going to select the member and go message members. In this case, I want to send a reminder message. So from there, you're going to see up here, this confirms how many people the message is being sent to. As a best practice, always check that this is going to the number of people you expect it to. So in this case, I have one record selected. That's who I wanted to send it to. If I had 200 members selected, something has gone wrong when I was doing my selection and I need to go back and I need to correct that before I send the message out. The other thing to note is that whoever is sending a message, if there are any responses, it is going to go back straight to your email inbox. So there's no need to check a different messaging um, portal in ePact. So as I scroll down, anything in brackets is going to autofill. So the email is going to be customized for the parent that is receiving it. And then as I scroll down, there is an area where you can put in any custom text. This is typically for something like a submission date. From there, I'm going to click preview message at the very bottom of the screen. And then scroll to the very bottom. This is what the message is going to look like for your families. And at the very bottom here, you're just going to click send reminder. So the other thing you have the capability to do is to send general and emergency messages as needed. So the nice thing about this is when your parents put in their contact information into ePact, those are the, that's the information that automatically plugs into our communication tools. So if, for example, you guys are on a field trip and the bus is stuck in traffic coming home and you need to notify parents that pickup will be at 5.30 instead of 5, you can absolutely do that. In this case, I'm going to open up my event search and filter because it's only for today's program. So we're in summer camp week one. I'm going to click search here. And that's going to grab me 35 members. From there, I'm going to select them and I'm going to go message members general. So you're going to see here, I had the option to include legal guardians, but also emergency contacts. In this case, it's not a really critical um, message that's going out. It's just a late bus, so I'm going to include just my legal guardians. So from here, I'm going to type out my message. So bus is stuck in traffic. Please pick up at 5.30, for example. So for those of you that do have text and voice messaging, you can actually just copy and paste this from your email and copy and paste that message right into your text message and voice message as well. That said, if you wanted to include different messages for different mediums, you could absolutely do that. So from here, I'm gonna click preview message. Again, this is going to show you what the email will look like. And then as I scroll down, it's going to confirm the text that's going to go out through my text message as well as my voice message. And from there, I'm just going to click send message and that would automatically send to all of the parents that are um, have children in that program. So I'm going to click back here just so I don't send this out to everybody. But I'm also going to show you how to send a general message or sorry, emergency message. So let's say knock on when this doesn't happen, but there's a scenario where you need to have the center evacuated and all of the kids picked up as quickly as possible. So I'm going to just select all here. I'm going to go message members emergency. In this case, I do want to include emergency contacts because I do want to have the kids picked up again as quickly as possible. So from there, I'm going to click review message and then type out my message here. So center is flooded. Please pick up at sports field one as soon as possible. Again, I'm going to copy and paste here, but you guys can provide different messages as you would like to. So here is where my text message goes. The next page down is where my voice message goes. And from there, I'm going to click preview message. 
review your message as you need to. If you need to go back and make any changes, you absolutely can. But again, you would just click send emergency message. And in that case, that's going to go to all 61 members in my organization. So again, I'm just going to quickly back out of here and bring you back to my dashboard so I can show you a few other things. Okay. Um, if you ever do need to download that PDF record that we mentioned, just select the member who you'd like to do that for and click download. If you'd like to um, download the record that was provided through EPACT, you're going to click on records and that's going to generate a PDF. Or if you wanted to download those files, that's things like those um, extensive allergy plans that I showed you or medication instructions, for example, you would click on files and that's going to export a zip file for you with all of the relevant documents that were uploaded for that member. We also have more actions. If you ever need to add or remove a member from a group, you can use those under here. The other thing is using paper form. If you ever need to indicate that someone's using a paper form, you would just select that here. If they change their mind and they want to use EPACT instead, you're just going to click, oh, sorry, click using EPACT. And then again, there is that option to export a list as I showed you. So the last thing I want to show you, again, just a reminder on this groups tab, that is how you can view your individual groups. So if, for example, you wanted to see everybody that's attending a field trip, you would just select that here. As you can see, I have eight members assigned here. These are those eight members in that program. And at group administrators, that will show me who else is an administrator. In this case, I am the only one overseeing this group. Finally, the last two things to show you. The first is our Help Center, and this is absolutely one of your best resources to use. So anytime you need to access it, you're going to click on Help in this blue header. And this is going to bring you to a wealth of different resources. So first of all, we do have written training guides as well as video training guides. There will be a copy of this webinar available up there as well. But you can also search for um, frequently asked questions. So for example, how do I change an email for a member? From there, you're just gonna search for that. And from there, I am going to search for how do I edit an email address for one of my members? As you can see, when I scroll down, it does give me screenshots of everything I need to follow along with. So it's really easy for you guys to go through and find any answers you need. Um, this is also a great resource for your parents that they are welcome to use as well. Um, and in terms of customer support, we do have um, customer support offered by both email and um, phone as well. And we are happy to help out with any of your families as needed. So the last thing I want to show you here is a little bit about our mobile app. So let me go back to my presentation here. So the EPACT admin app, it is available in the App Store, in Google Play, and for Blackberries. Yes, we do still support Blackberries, believe it or not. So the way the app works is that when you have Wi-Fi or internet or 3G, 4G, for example, what you're going to do is you're going to log in and you're going to update member records. What this does is it actually takes a snapshot of your member records at that exact point in time and saves them onto your device. What this means is that later on, when you're on a field trip or at the park, for example, you still have access to this information, um, even if you don't have access to the internet. So I'm just going to show you some quick screenshots here. You can see on the left-hand side, that's what our login page looks like. You can also enable quick login. We know that sometimes if there is an emergency, you don't want to be fumbling with that password. So this allows you to enable quick login. This just matches what's on your device, so typically a four or six digit code, for example, or a fingerprint. The next thing after that is update member records. So again, when you log in, the app is going to ask if you'd like to update your member records. As a best practice, you always want to be doing this, so click go to update records page. In the middle screenshot here, you can see that I have this update all records button that's green. I'm going to click that, and that's what's going to sync the records to my phone. Again, you want to get into the habit of doing this. It really is a best practice. I recommend doing it at least um, two times a week. And typically, a, um, a really good time to do that is on a Monday morning before your programs start. So once you do that, you're going to see a confirmation message that that member update is complete. Again, that means that you have access to these records later on when you are offline. So next up, just a quick view of what the member records look like. You can see that I have tabs here that are similar to what's in the system. So if I click on the members tab on the left, that's going to show me all of the members across all of my groups. 
or if I wanted to view individual groups, I would just click on the groups tab on the right. And as you can see here, it lists all of those groups as well. So I can click into them and view the members. All right, next up we have viewing a record. So Adorable Mary here, you can see that this is the same information that I showed you in the desktop version of ePact, but it's really just optimized for a phone or a tablet. So shrunk down to work on a um, mobile device. Next up, if you scroll down in Mary's profile, you would see the contact information for legal guardians as well as emergency contacts. You can actually click right from here to call, to text, to email, for example, as long as you have some sort of internet connection. You can also add a comment in the app. The nice thing about this is it does sync back um, when you have internet or Wi-Fi again. So if you added a comment when you're offline, when you come back online, it will sync back to that member's record. And to get here, you can see in the bottom here, I have my info, which is the main record. And now I am in the middle comment section. The next one after that is going to be files on the right hand side. So in this case, you can see that Mary has a kayaking waiver uploaded. So with this, the one thing to note is that with files, these are the only thing you cannot view in the offline mode. And the reason we do that is just because photos and documents and PDFs, they just take up too much memory and space on your device. And we don't want to have all these um, files taking up the space on your phone or your tablet, for example. So if you have internet, whether it's Wi-Fi or data connection, you can absolutely access these files at any time. It's just offline, you won't be able to view them. But offline, you can still see the basic member information that's been provided, such as allergies and emergency contacts. That's not a problem. Finally, we have added messaging to the app. So you can send a message directly to the app, again, as long as you have some sort of internet connection. And this will actually let you send it to the entire organization or specific groups. So you can see here, it's giving me the option to indicate whether it's an emergency message and if I'd like to include emergency contacts. From there, I'm going to fill in my email, my text and my voice message. And then at the very bottom, once that's done, it will allow me to click send message and that will again automatically send through the app for me. Finally, as a best practice, you always wanna make sure you go to the menu on your device and you're gonna click log out of the app just to ensure the best privacy and security. That said, the app will automatically log you out after 30 minutes of inactivity as well. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, just a quick reminder, if you need help or if any of your families need help, you guys are more than welcome to use our help center, but you can always reach us by email and phone as well. So with that, thank you again for participating today. Uh, I'm gonna open up the floor for any questions that we have.